Do all Christians think the same? We're going to find this out today. We are joined with my friend Julia Poe Peterson. Hello. You got me, your girl Kirby Kelly. Kirby is the boss. We are both Christians, and we are going to go through a list of questions and see if we disagree, strongly disagree, or agree and strongly agree. We got some good old Awala cups. It was the best thing that I could find. Um, and we are basically going to say a statement Take a few seconds to let it ruminate, think it over, and we are either going to move our Awala cups, which represent us, the little tops of them, to one of these to express whether we agree with the statement, disagree with the statement, or even beyond that. So if you want more content like this, like, subscribe, comment down below, but we're gonna get into it. I'm ready. ready? I'm a little nervous, but I'm ready. Oh, well, are you nervous? I don't know, I just feel like there's gonna be some questions that are gonna be kinda juicy. Get ready. Here yeah. we go. Statement number one. Christian music is lame. Ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay. I put disagree. You put strongly disagree. Why strongly disagree? Now, if you had asked me this like 10 years ago, yes. I might have had a different answer. Yeah. But recently, Christian music has just been like next level. True. That is all I listen to. I don't even have like a desire to listen to anything else because I don't feel like I'm missing the creativity or anything like that. And I just think it's great. Not to say like all secular music is bad, mm -hmm. but I think we've come a long way. I 100% agree. But there's definitely <laughs> some <laughs> Christian music where it's like, okay, yeah, we, we, we can grow a little bit yeah. more in these areas. But I definitely agree in the sense of like, it is 10 times better than where it was in like the 90s. Yeah. And like Y2K Christianity music. Even though some of them were bops low key. Yeah. Some of them were bops, but you're right. They have gotten way better. Well, that's why I put disagree. Because yeah. it's like, we're, no, we're getting you. there. Yeah. I'm with you. All right. The next statement. Do you agree or disagree with this? Christians shouldn't cuss. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know this one's going to ruffle some feathers. Three, two, one. Oh, why are you impartial? Why are you in the middle between I'm a gray and I'm just, I'm like, I'm in both. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to answer for, okay. So let me define cussing for a second. I'm not talking about like speaking curses, like curses in the yeah. Bible. Like, obviously that's a, a no-go 100%. But when I think of like cussing and swear words, I put agree just because of what the stigma is around it mm -hmm. and how for a lot of people when it comes to swearing and using language that is deemed more foul yeah i could see how that could cause people to either not stumble or even just question the integrity of a believer i'm not saying that every christian who swears is evil and bad and like yeah. the worst person ever because we're all human and we all struggle with that and that's not like the worst sin that you could do. Yep. But I know the stigma that can be attached to that and the reputation that can be attached to that. So it's it's one of those things like when I think of Paul, it's like, well, you know, if it's gonna cause them to stumble, why why would I even do it? And, I, and so I think totally. for that reason, knowing how the world views swearing, like to most people, yeah, I think that's why it's like, I agree, just like, don't do it. like refrain from it yeah i, I agree and i think we, there's a, always a debate about whether or not it's a sin yeah and we're not talking about that in this context like we could could get into that but whether like do i think a christian should cuss and i think the short answer is no mm -hmm. because number one like we're called to be set apart from the world mm -hmm. and honestly like i think even just in the secular space people think of those who don't cuss as like I don't even know how to explain it. You know, I've had friends where they're like, oh, I can't say that around Julia. She's Christian and she doesn't cuss. And they just have that in their head, like yeah. I, as that connotation. So like, like you said, like if we're going to start speaking in that way, it may cause question yeah. from certain people. And also just if it's not necessarily an edifying thing or something that should be coming out of our mouth, like that. the Bible is very particular about that. Yeah. And there's not many instances where cuss words are used to edify something. Exactly. So the next statement is Christians should prioritize reading the Old Testament just as much as reading the New Testament. Mm. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Three, two, one. I strongly, strongly agree with this, but why do you agree with it? 
I agree with it because if you're a newer believer, I, reading the Old Testament is so important. I'm so passionate about that. Like mm-hmm. 100%. I think the gospel is so important. Like it is, but the gospel is like intertwined all throughout scripture. However, starting wise, yes, New Testament, like 100%. Totally. But I think as especially like an American church, we've gotten so far away from the Old Testament scripture because people are afraid of it. It isn't necessarily, I don't know why, but exciting or it's boring, which it's so exciting. It doesn't relate to us. I'm like, girl. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I just think I put, I'm like, I, I agree, I strongly agree. It's hard when you're in this area. It's like, if in the Bible, it's meant for us. Yeah. Like, it's as simple as that. True. Yeah. I think I put strongly agree simply because I just see this narrative of like, well, you don't really have to read the Old Testament. Just read the New Testament. We do need to read the New Testament, especially as Christians, because that displays the like life, like death, burial, resurrection, and the continuation of Christ's ministry yeah. through his life in the church. That's very vital for us as people who follow Jesus to know. Totally. But we're missing out on the full picture of what God is revealing to us and the importance of Jesus coming if we don't read the Old Testament. 100%. So I understand that there are things in there that might not apply to us directly contextually today, especially because of what Jesus did. Yeah. But it's like, I think knowing that and going deep in that will only give us one more understanding for the new testament but two like a stronger and deeper relationship with the lord totally i think Mm -hmm. people are just missing out on like the full picture if you're only looking at like this half of the frame the next statement is christians should no longer struggle with sin once they're saved ready i'm ready three two one (laughs) let me throw it across the room yeah I strongly disagree with this because it literally says in scripture, he who says that they are without sin is in sin. Yeah. Like you are just deceiving yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that when we come to Christ, one, like there's a newness of life and new salvation. And with that, some sin easily falls away because the bondage it had on you, the, the lies that you once believed and saw it as kind of like fade away you see it for what it is totally. and maybe those things are easy to abandon but we have to also understand especially life before christ we get into a rhythm we get into an ha- a habit we find things that are comfortable yeah. and appease our flesh and those things might be a little harder to break off of like we not only have free will to make godly and like wicked decisions but we also have a fleshy nature within us that is bent towards the things of this world that give us instant gratification and seem to be the best option when maybe it's not. So I don't think we should continue on sinning, Mm -hmm. but we shouldn't think that we're the worst Christian ever because we're still struggling and working to be free from sin that we were once entangled in. Yeah, I totally agree. I think... If you come into that, honestly, if you come into being a Christian with the mindset that you won't fall, you're going to fall the hardest because the devil is going to tempt you. Like, I I don't, that's just going to happen. And our flesh is so, it loves sin. Like, even we're born, like, no, when you're a Christian, you're no longer a slave to sin. But how often do we return to it? Exactly. Like a dog returns to its vomit. Like that's read this and that's such a great picture of like yeah sin's terrible it's gonna stink for us afterwards we're gonna feel that conviction if we have the holy spirit living inside of us but there's a reason jesus was the only perfect person to walk this earth it's because humans like we have a sin nature and until one day when we are in eternity with jesus like we're gonna have to deal with temptation and falling into sin but definitely if you are in bondage to sin, like God doesn't want you to stay there. Yeah. Um, and you're, you are going to struggle. You are going to fall. But as a Christian, like the, where the change happens is you feel that conviction and you begin to feel a disgust towards your sin and you want to become transformed and renewed by the Lord in that. The last statement is if I were to die today, right here, right now, I would hundred percent know I would go to heaven. Three, two. 
this is here's why I put this question because I think that if you give someone like on a scale from one to ten how sure are you that you're going to heaven it's either zero or ten yeah and it's like the reason why and maybe I'm speaking for both of us but I'm sure you would strongly agree yeah is because our faith is in Jesus and it's not just well I believe in him but it's I submit my life to him as well and I'm doing life with him and it's because of him I am changed and my justification like my righteousness my ability to stand before God despite my sin has been completely washed clean it's because of Jesus and my faith in him and my relationship with him that I I can say yes strongly agree because it's not anything that I did the only thing I did was put my faith in Jesus and choose to follow him him totally i think i see those tiktoks it's like i think about all the time like what if i hear depart from me i never knew you yeah why are we worrying about that what do you mean like what what are you talking about like if you are living your life for jesus i feel horrible and i want any christians watching this who you live a life for jesus but you just believe the lie well i don't know maybe i hope i'm going to heaven (laughs) you don't have to wonder like you can know if you're going to heaven like if you're fully living your life for jesus why did jesus come yeah. Like, if you believe that he came, lived a perfect life, died on the cross, rose again for your sins, he came so that we could be in community with him and be in unison with him. So that is the promise of our inheritance. We are Christians. Like, that is the promise. Heaven is the promise. It's not heaven in itself, but it's communing with God forever. Forever. And that's so incredible. And I never, like, as a kid... I got, would get kind of worried. I'd like hear someone be like, the rapture is going to be in 2008. And I'm just, <laughs> am I gonna, yeah, am I going to die? And I would be so worried because nobody ever, like, I had just never thought about it in that way. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going to heaven. Like, I'm not going to live a complacent life and be like, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to heaven. I'm a good person. Exactly. But if you, you can be sure that you are going to heaven if you're truly living a life sold out for God. Mm-hmm. I just want to encourage anybody out there who might be wrestling with that and doubting that of, well, am I, but am I not? And you're just kind of in this back and forth and like not fully assured of this. Jesus wants to give us full assurance for our faith in him. And it even says in scripture, and so many people take this verse out of context, perfect love casts out fear. If you were to actually go and read that whole chunk of scripture, which I encourage you to do, it's talking about our salvation and how people were like, well, am I really saved? And he's like, yeah. the perfect love of Jesus, fully understanding what God did on the cross for you should cast out that fear of depart. I never knew you, Yeah, this idea of that. So maybe all you really need to do, you don't need to focus so much on everything you're doing to like try and earn your way into heaven. Maybe you need to really just sit and be perfected and truly understand the the full weight as much as we can as human beings. Yeah the love of God that was displayed on the cross for you to be in relationship with you. It's only through Jesus. It's only because of Jesus. It's only by Jesus. Well, thank you for joining me today, Julia. Where can everybody follow you? Because Julia, she'd be posting content literally left and right. (laughs) So you guys can follow me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. All my handles are J-U-L-I-A-A-P-O-E-E, Julia Poe with two vowels added onto the end. I don't know why I did that back in the day, but it stuck. So that is my handle on every single platform. And yeah, hopefully you guys will see Kirby on my channel. We're still, I know, we'll figure it out. We've got videos on there from that. We'll it. But yeah, hope you guys liked it. Subscribe, new videos every single Sunday. Comment down below if you want a part two. And if you do want a part two, Let me know what kind of questions you want me to answer. I know I had Julia on. I know that I had Richard on. Let me know. We'll figure it out. Let me know if you even want a special guest on here. It'll be great. But until next time, I love you guys. And I will see you on Sunday. Bye.